So if you're hearing about a survivorship care plan and haven't received one, you should ask for one. And you could let the doctor or nurse know that on your next visit, you'd like to have one. I also think patients and families should be asking for treatment plans at the beginning to have in writing what they're being told is gonna happen. We don't wanna put the burden of asking for this on the patient. We should build this into the system of care so it becomes standard. But until that happens, I think some of the burden will be on the patient and family to ask for them. A lot of anxiety around the diagnosis of cancer is not knowing what's gonna happen. And anxiety and uncertainty go hand in hand. And the more you can reduce the amount of uncertainty there is about what's gonna happen, the less anxious people will be. There have been a number of studies that have been done that show some of the providers do it for some of the patients some of the time. What the Commission on Cancer Standards are requiring starting 2015 is that it being done more consistently for more of the patients by more of the providers. I'm not sure we'll ever get to 100%, but we should be getting way up into the 80% or higher. And I think the more educated patients and their families can be to ask for them, the more likely that's going to occur. As a nurse, yeah. I'd like to think that nursing will lead the way for how to do this and how to implement it. But the devil's in the details. And so it's a great concept, but you have to figure out what patients are going to get them, when they're going to get them, who's going to develop them, and who's going to deliver them. And one of the bigger issues is who's going to pay for that service. And right now, in and of itself, it's not a reimbursable service. But you can, you can certainly bill for that service if you're also doing it during an office visit, or you can bill for it as a provider, as an education and counseling session. So the purpose of developing this tool is to facilitate communication and coordination of care. There's nothing magic about the piece of paper you get as a care plan. And what we're looking for is to create a model of care where your oncologist may be delivering some of the cancer care or some of the follow-up for the short term, but your primary care provider is developing your other health care needs, checking your cholesterol, your blood pressure, giving you your flu shot, and all those other things. Primary care providers often feel locked out or shut out once the patient's been diagnosed with cancer and never see them again until it's all over. And, and then and then that interferes with the relationship with the patient and their primary care provider. And so we create some difficulties in that relationship by the way we deliver cancer care. So I think that the treatment plan should go to the patient and their primary care provider with a clear statement to their primary care provider that they should continue to deliver the non-cancer related care throughout that time period. So if you don't have a good primary care provider or don't have a good relationship with one, you're going to get, want one because you're going to need that person for the rest of your life.